Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the feature race at beautiful Belmont Park on Saturday is the $100,000 Dancing Renee Stakes for New York bred fillies and mares going six furlongs. You can play this nice card at Belmont with a DRF Bets account. Deposit 100, bet with 250. DRF Bets, ready, set, bet. Let's take a look at the field for the Dancing Renee Stakes. Family bragging rights on the line with the two holiday disguise, the older half sister to the five midnight disguise, both trained by Linda Rice. Yeah. They're the two favorites on the morning line. Which disguise do you prefer? Well, you know, holiday disguise, um, I think it's been made pretty clear when you and I do all of these videos, and we've done for most of her races. I'm her biggest fan. Um, and she does have bragging rights right now. Bragging rights right now. I mean, she's the way more accomplished horse so far in this race. But it is her her little sister, Midnight Disguise, who has all the upside in this race. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. I, you know, personally thought Midnight Disguise ran well last time. New career top ADA buyer. She had no chance with a razor sharp Catherine the Wise in there. Just gave them no chance. This filly ran well to be second. And I think it's you know worth pointing out that she is two for two sprinting in her career. That's a good point because usually when you think of Midnight Disguise, you think of this this big yeah, mare big that wants mare. to run all day long. But she is effective if you give her pace, and really that's the key I think in the Dance and Renee Stakes. As we take a look at the Time Form U.S. Pace Projector, we're expected a slow pace or a race a pace that will at least favor horses yeah. on or near the early lead, and that's the four Leah's Dream now. Chris Engelhardt said in the race advance provided by Dave Grenning that he's not even sure he's going to run Leah's Dream. He thought there was going to be a wet track. We've had some weather this week. Leah's Dream's 8 for 11 on a wet track. If yeah. she's lone speed on a wet track, you run her. I still think you run her because she's just so sharp right now. Yeah, she's actually in really good form. You know, for a, a mare who's 10 for 26 lifetime, it's interesting. They claimed her early in 2018. She lost her first six starts for these connections, and she's gone six for eight since then. All she does is when she really does like a wet track. And even though um, she just could make the front in here, and I, I still don't think she's good enough to beat this field, even if she makes the lead. And it's not like there aren't other horses in here who can you know, be forwardly placed. I, I didn't look at this race and feel like she's got a huge pace advantage on this field. Does this really hurt Midnight Disguised, or do you think we're just going to be sort of close to the pace? It'll be run like a turf race. It'll be three lengths surrounding everybody, and yeah. whoever's got the best kick wins. Yeah, I don't think it really affects uh, Midnight Disguised or Holiday Disguised. Neither one of them are plotters anyway. They want to be off the pace, but they're not going to be ten lengths out of it. Let's talk about pause for the cause. You could certainly show speed. And remember, Timeform US updates the pace projector after scratches are official. Head over to timeformus.com after scratches. This pace projector could change and it could have pause for the cause on the lead in a blue bar scenario. Oh, yeah. She was on the lead last time out. She finished second to Abounding Joy, who I think is okay. I thought she ran well in the Broadway. She got she was not aggressive early at all. She was steadied and bumped in tight in the opening furlong, and she ended up running second to Holiday Disguise. Uh, not a prolific winner, six yeah. times third from 18 lifetime starts, but a nice outside post and a yeah. good running style. She did get a good trip in this race. I just wonder if she's good enough. She yeah. ran a couple of races after they decided to get her off the turf. Um, she won a couple of races as a main track only last summer. And then, you know, it felt like maybe she was on her way and was going to really improve. I don't think it really happened for her. I hear what you're saying about the Broadway. Um, but there was a competitive pace in that race. They took her off it. I thought overall the trip was good, and Holiday Disguise ran her right over. I think Holiday Disguise and Midnight Disguise are both better than she is. Ever since the connections of Adam Warbick decided to use her speed, we've seen an uptick in her form. A gate to wire when sprinting three starts yeah. back, a couple of good efforts going a one turn mile. I like her cutting back in distance. And again, if Louis Saez wants it, yeah. he can probably go, especially if the four is withdrawn. Yeah, I like them cutting back with her a little bit. She's fine at a one turn mile. She's, she can run her race at that distance. But I think she might be a little bit better sprinting. She does have the speed. Um, to be forwardly placed in this race, maybe even right out on the lead. I just wonder if she's really good enough. I mean, so far her best race isn't going get to get it done against this field. I think last time out, JC's shooting star was using that Mount Vernon as a prep. She was A, overmatched against a horse yeah. like 55. It was kind of a grade three, grade two type Perfect. on her very best day. Second, it was her first start off about a six month layoff. She had every right to need the race. I wonder if they were planning for this all along ever since she won on New Year's Day going six and a half furlongs. Now, she has to prove she's this good, but the horse she beat that day came back to run third in the correction with an 87 buyer speed figure. Uh, she needs pace too, though. Yeah, she is one of those horses who really needs pace. They um, 
fine. She's always been a, a really good New York bred. They yeah. figured out um, sort of towards the end of 2017 and then into last year that she's a sprinter. She's way better sprinting, at least at this stage of her career. Um, so far, that means she's a better turf sprinter. But, you know, her dirt form was okay. She won that race on New Year's Day. It, to me, the New Year's Day win is way more a case of Sounds Delicious just not being that good anymore and coughing up the clearest stretch lead you could ever have. But this horse was there, and she ran her down at the end. She's pretty good on her best day. Let's take a look at our top pick for the Dancing Renee Stakes. We are going to go with Holiday Disguise back in with State Bread Company. Last time in against New York Breads, she won the Broadway Handicap very, very easily. Just been in against Come Dancing, who ran, what, a 113 yeah. in that grade three distaff handicap. Holiday Disguise isn't that kind of horse. I don't really think she ran badly last time out I don't in the either. vagrancy. It was a race with no pace. She was hung out three wide, four path, and. She she just tired. It was understandable. Separation of powers, the third finisher, came back to buy her 100 and grabbing the better roses last week. Third start of the form cycle, can yeah. stay close to the pace. Yeah. Price probably won't be there, but she's the horse to beat. Yeah, just, just a much better spot for her than the one she's been in. 251 for Mike, 254 for me, and the $100,000 Dancing Renee, your feature race at Belmont on Saturday. Get involved with a new DRF Bets account. Deposit 100, gamble with 250. Learn more at bets.drf.com. Approximate post time for the Dancing Renee, 551 Eastern. Good luck.